the bleak outlook uh, presented in Hosea 7 of Ephraim of Judah turning to as a country turning to foreign lands and pagan rulers countries for security and not having the sense to realize that they would be a snare unto the people of God and that the tributes that they would pay thousands of talents of silver was draining the strength of the nations and cities of the people of God. And in Hosea 7, it says that the gray hairs that are popping up as a result of their strength being sapped by their dependence on these other nations was a sign of their decline and they didn't even know it. You have this relationship politically, geopolitically with the children of Israel with the cities Ephraim of Judah and you also have their idolatry and adopting of the pagan rituals and practices of these foreign nations that was equally diminishing their relationship with God and separating them from the God of their salvation. And I am prompted to apply this understanding to many Western countries who are currently experiencing an influx of foreign peoples and cultures, philosophies and doctrines invading their land in mass, while at the same time experiencing a diminishing of their Judeo-Christian values. It is almost as if it's a vacuum as a country's and culture's reliance on God, the God of the Bible, the true and living God, as a diminishing of a culture's and a people's reliance on God occurs in a community and that culture, a vacuum is created and the foreign ungodly doctrines and philosophies of this world come in. So where there is no dependence on God, no worship of God, no fostering a relationship with God enters in now with that development as the glory of God leaves the darkness of unholiness and evil comes in. Secular individuals and Christians alike should not be deceived. When there is no worship of God, there is no true dependence on God, a vacuum exists 
avatar is formed and it sucks in the depravity and the darkness of this world. The areas of an individual's life that is not dedicated to God, such as their finances, their marriage, their career, their minds, and their hearts, will eventually be succumbed by the dark forces and darkness of this world. There is no middle ground, as some people would like to think. As the word of the Lord says in Revelations 3 about the church in Laodicea, you are neither hot nor cold. How I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Therefore, the lukewarm individual will eventually be brought into the cold darkness of the absence of God's glory. And then a decision will have to be made on whether to remain in their state of coldness and darkness and develop doctrines and philosophies and procedures and a life within this realm of darkness and death or turn and head toward the light and life that is in Jesus Christ. But this turning, this repentance and coming in humility to God through Jesus Christ is not as easy as it sounds because individuals have developed customs and cultures within the darkness and depravity of their so-called life without God which is an eternal and spiritual death. The example that we see of the children of Israel, of the land of Judah and of Ephraim, which is Israel, is that they turn from God and dependence and reliance on God, the God of their covenant, the God of their scriptures. And in Hosea 7, it says, Ephraim also is like a silly dove. Without sense, they call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. For some unconscionable reason, the people of God turn to nations in the world cultures in the world Egypt and Assyria and particularly Egypt the land where they had to be rescued their slave masters their former captors for assistance when it was their God the God of their covenant, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, that rescued them and brought them into the land that they are occupying today. How far have the people of God fallen when they choose to turn to that from which they were rescued for assistance? It is as if an individual that was rescued from a burning building to turn and run back into that building that is on fire. But this is the situation that the children of Israel, the land of Judah and of Ephraim, find themselves in 
according to the writings of Hosea. And what we learn from this situation is that the choices that the people of God made, the choice to turn their backs on the true and living God and seek assistance and refuge from a pagan and dark world system is the same choice that faces Christian believers today. There are various large scale and small scale quote unquote solutions to the problems that men and women face. They can turn to pills, they can turn to alcohol, drugs, psycho spirituality, doctrines of demons, they call it, philosophies such as Buddhism and Hinduism, rationalism, existentialism, and various other isms from around the world to satisfy and calm their troubled minds and hearts. But all of these erroneous and false doctrines and half-truths lead an individual further and further away from the light of life from the true God from their creator and from righteousness and like Lot individuals look over the land and see that it is fertile and fruitful with worldly implements and Individuals set up their camp, they set up their home, they build their lives in and around the modern day cultures of Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt and Assyria. Lands and cultures that are scheduled to be destroyed. Temporary anomalies in the creation of God that will used for a specific purpose and then cast into utter darkness. But the historical and prophetic account in the Old Testament and in the book of Hosea of the wrong decisions, the wrong behavior, and the wrong mindset and perspective that the, a majority of the children of Israel had at that time gives us an example of the long suffering love and care that the Lord has for his people and illuminates for us today the wrong decisions that we often make in choosing to ignore our God and our Creator while we blindly pursue temporal things in this earth. We make a faulty exchange for the lesser rather than the greater. We have, as the children of Israel had during that time period, access to all things through Christ. And if we know this truth, and if we incorporate this truth into our minds and our hearts, and we also know that our Lord cares for us, as it has been historically shown in the biblical accounts, we will less likely be deceived, become disobedient children of God, impetuous, impatient, with uncontrolled lusts and desires. 
but it is incumbent upon each and every individual to develop a system of meditating in the word of God, meditating on the principles of God daily, nightly, as the preventive medicine and protection against the deceptions present in this world and a help for managing the desires of the flesh. And our attitude must be as Simon Peter's in John 6, verse 68. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Christ is our Redeemer, our salvation, our Savior. And we must come to know that he is the Holy One of God. And that the words in the Bible are the words of eternal life. They contain access to the Holy Spirit of God and they are the redemption and salvation of humanity. But while Peter correctly stated that Jesus has the words of eternal life in John 6 and that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Peter also in the course of time denied Jesus with cursing and swearing by the fire of people who were not Jesus' disciples. Peter's actions in denying Jesus at the time of his arrest and incarceration is comparable to Ephraim's and Judah's denial of their God in search of protection from Egypt and Assyria and other neighboring lands. When the weaknesses of the worship of Ephraim, the tribes of Ephraim and Judah were exposed through trials and testings and attacks they did not hold fast to their faith in God. And likewise, though Peter stated that Jesus had the words of life and that Jesus was the Messiah, when times got hard, when the trouble hit the fan, he unfortunately denied that he knew Jesus while seeking warmth and protection from those who were not Jesus' disciples. And brothers and sisters, if the tribes of Judah, the cities of Israel experience trouble and wholesalely denounce God and turn from the righteous path and Peter a disciple of Jesus who walked with our Lord and Savior and had first hand experience of the words and power of God demonstrated through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if he goes through a life experience, a testing that results in him denying his knowledge of Jesus Christ, then who are we as modern day Christians to think that we will not also experience the trials and testings of our faith 
the situations of life in this present world that will either cause us to drop to our knees and pray to our God or turn our back and deny the words of life. I tell you today, as Jesus told his disciples hundreds of years ago, the devil has asked to sift you as wheat. Modern day Christians should not think that they will escape the trials and testings that have been given to the people of God throughout history. Tribes have fallen and failed. Cities have fallen and failed. And individuals have fallen from grace and failed their tests and their trials. Peter did not lack time and experience with Jesus. He was taught, he was firsthand. Yet, circumstances arranged themselves in such a way that allowed for the perfect opportunity wherein Peter would deny his faith in Jesus Christ. We see a glimpse of Peter's and the other disciples' weakness in Luke 22, verse 46, when Jesus, after praying on the Mount of Olives, he comes back and see his disciples sleeping. And he asked him, why are you sleeping? He asked him, get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. In Matthew's account, chapter 26, verse 41, it says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Therefore, if the spirit of the believer is willing, yet his or her flesh is weak, we need to make stronger connections between the spirit and the flesh. And that connection is primarily made between the mind and the heart. If our minds are renewed according to the word of God and our hearts are burning for the promises and the hope that is presented to us by the finished work of Jesus Christ, then our flesh the behavior of our flesh will be more likely to conform to our willing spirit and the Holy Spirit within us. The words given to Joshua in chapter one of that book still apply today. Meditate in my word day and night in order to make your way successful in order that you behave successfully, in order that you make good decisions, godly decisions. And the Apostle Paul, with an updated but similar message, tells the church to not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, and that word debauchery simply means corruption, excessive indulgences and sensual pleasures, vice, depravity, immodesty and indecency and perversion. All of the things that the tribes and the cities of Judah and Israel, Ephraim, were accused of in Hosea 
And it is not just wine that leads to corruption and excessive indulgences and sensual pleasures. It's anything, money, power, or ungodly influence. But the apostle used wine specifically to make a comparison with the spirit. Because it goes on to say in Ephesians 5.18 Do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but be filled with the spirit. Debauchery is the corruption of the flesh. It's the behavior of the flesh that leads to corruption and sin in the sight of God. And where Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So here when the apostle is saying, but be filled with the spirit. And we go on to verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To God, even the Father. Christian believers should not miss the connection that the apostle is making. Between getting drunk on wine and being filled with the Spirit. We all know, or maybe a majority of us know that getting drunk on wine, the continually drinking and drinking and drinking of wine will lead to drunkenness. But here the apostle makes the point that the singing and speaking to one another and ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs leads to being filled with the Spirit. As continually drinking wine leads to drunkenness, so shall continually speaking and singing to ourselves in songs and hymns, which is the Word of God. Spiritual songs leads to being filled constantly infilled and refilled and full of the spirit so brothers and sisters as Christ said our human spirit is willing but our flesh is weak then we must with the help of our helper the Holy Spirit strengthen our spirit so that our weakness in the flesh can be overcome by the word of God. And this is not a one-time thing. This is a continual thing. Daily, nightly. As God told Joshua, meditate in my word day and night. And the apostle says in Ephesians, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know our weaknesses. We know that we are going to be tested. We are going to be tried by the enemy of all righteousness. So therefore, let us all take the steps that are necessary to be successful in this battle of our faith in our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we have been given the problems that we, we will face in this world and we were also given the solution the behavior and activities and the worship that we need to conduct on a daily and a nightly basis in order to be successful. 
So in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us be mindful, let us be diligent to stay on the path, the narrow way of faith. Amen.